Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 12. Like Genesis chapter 12, it's Jewish. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. This is Abed, March, April. This is where Israel's life begins. Not right now. But at midnight. Abram the first. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel. 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 Saying, in the tenth day of this month. So Abed 10, they shall take to them every man a lamb. It's a corporate lamb. According to the house of their fathers, Jewish, a lamb for an house. Genesis 22, 8, God will provide himself. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. <clears throat> and if the household be too little for the Lamb. A Lamb. The Lamb. Let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating. Shall make your count for the Lamb. Get yourself a lamb. Take the lamb that you had received and bring it to your neighbors. Now that's not going all the world. Start with Jerusalem, Samaria, and other parts of the world. What is? Your lamb. A lamb, the lamb, your lamb. Shall be without blemish. First Peter one nineteen. A male of the first year. Well, that rules Mary out as your salvation, because she's female. We have no idea if she was first born or not, but Jesus is. Without blemish, no spot. Nothing wrong with it. From the tenth day that you take that lamb. Until the fourteenth day you sacrifice that lamb. You are to examine that lamb. And I don't have written here. But I forget which chapter it is. But John goes into much chapters. On the last week. Of Jesus Christ. Examining him. I didn't write that chapter down. Why? Because Exodus says you take that seven days you examine that lamb. Ye shall keep it up unto the fourteenth day of Abed of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel 
shall kill it in the evening, 6 p.m. When did Jesus die? He died Abit 14 at 6 p.m. Now, who said, who does the Bible say was supposed to kill that lamb? The Jews, the assembly, the entire assembly. Israel gathered all together to cry, crucify him. Now, I know Jesus Christ is God. I know you can't kill God. But did the Romans kill him? Absolutely not. It was the Jews that were to kill that Passover lamb of God, which take away the sin in the world. So the charge is upon the Jews. If the Jews did not kill Jesus, why would there be a time called Jacob's trouble? So we're looking at Jesus. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. There were two thieves on the either side of Jesus. And on the upper door posts, one in the middle is the one that died for me, of the houses. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Where ye shall eat it. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. <coughs> they shall eat the flesh in that night. What did they do when they took Jesus out off the cross? They went off and had their Passover meal. It's a Sabbath. Roast with fire. Jesus went into hell. Well, if you don't believe the hell is fire and fire is hell. Unleavened bread. You don't have time to put leaven. Leaven is a bad thing in the Bible. It's false doctrine. It's something added to the dough that does not belong there. It makes you puffy and bigger than what you should be. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. It was bitterness that Jesus Christ took our sins. Father, this cup, please. Nonetheless, thy will shall be done. Eat it not it eat not of it raw. Nor sodden at all with water. I thirst. But roast with fire. His head with his legs with the pretense thereof. All of it. Christ died and his soul went into hell. And the cross he cries, I thirst. And you shall let nothing of it remain unto the morning, no leftovers. And that which remains of it, if there is, unto the morning you shall burn with fire. You only need one sacrifice of the Lord. You don't get leftovers when it comes to salvation. You don't need to do it Saturday, then do it Sunday, then do it Monday, then do it Tuesday. Hebrew says one sacrifice forever. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Be ready to go. You shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now it's remarkable. He says, none of it shall remain the morning. But they're not in Egypt anymore by morning. 6 a.m. They're gone. They're on the move. For I, God, will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, there you go. There you go. We've been attacking the gods. And this god, I've written down here, is 
Ama Ray. A M U N R E. A M U N R E. He's the God of the Firstborn. And guess who won? God. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Dagon, bow down before me. And the blood of that land shall be to you for a token, a sign, an emblem, a price. You go to Subway, you used to get a token. No token, no going to the Subway. Upon the houses where ye are, Goshen. And when I see the blood, there's that M, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. You know what's going to save you? Is that blood. If I approach your house and there's no blood, there'll be death. If I come up to that house and there's blood, you'll be spared. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Remember, mark it. First Corinthians eleven twenty five. That's what our Lord's Supper is. You remember that night that God spared you by the blood, and you remember Jesus Christ's blood. As he sat down at the table with his disciples. He said, here's his cup. And here's the bread. 1 Corinthians 11.25 And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance. For, here's an ordinance. You have to do this as a Jew. You must do this as a Jew. Paul says as far as the Lord says, as often as you do this, you don't have to do it. You should. If you don't, doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven. But we're going to lay down a law here for the Jews. If you don't do this, And as we get through the Old Testament, mark how few times the Passover is kept. And yet the Passover marked a few revivals in the land by kings. He shall keep it a feast of the Lord throughout your generations. 2017 is supposed to keep this. As the law prescribed. But they can't. Seven days, here we go, shall ye eat unleavened bread, no leaven at all. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. A good leaven agent is the news, is the newspaper, is the media. Get that out. Put it away. And I am told in Jewish houses at this time, the women go through the house top to bottom, right to left, east to west, and they make sure all leaven is gone. Question is, why are you even use it at all? A little leaven, leaven the whole lot. You're not supposed to have leaven. If you don't have leaven, then you don't have to make sure your house is clean. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day. So the feast of unleavened bread is seven days right after the Passover. 
that soul shall be cut off from Israel, you're damned. So, adultery and murder, there is no sacrifice offered by God. True statement. And if you did not do the Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread correctly, you were cut off also. No sacrifice. And the first day, Read a note I got here. On the first day, there shall be an holy convocation, and in the eight, seventh day, there shall be an holy conviction, conviction to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. We have a rest, but it's not a Sabbath day rest yet. The Jews don't know what a Sabbath is yet. But this first holiday of theirs, Holy Day, you are to do no work. Seven days. So the first real Sabbath that the Jews get is the Passover and the unleavened bread. We're not marking the, the seventh day any yet. In the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them. Say that which every man must eat, that only may be done for you. During the, the feast and the unleavened bread, you can make your food, you can cook. That's not the seventh day rest. The seventh day rest was no work at all. But we haven't got to that. Forget the Sabbath right now. We're going in order of the Bible. We haven't done the Sabbath. He said, well, what about Genesis? On the seventh day, God rested. Moses writes Genesis and Exodus. Genesis has not been written yet. That comes after Exodus 20. So when you come in the order of the events... The holy days, the days that the Jews are to follow, the first one is the Passover, and then the seven days of no leavened bread. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe the day in your generations by an ordinance forever. I wonder how many are doing that. The first month, Abed, on the 14th day of that month, at even, 6 p.m., you shall eat unleavened bread unto the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. 14th to the 21st day, from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., no leavened bread. This Feast starts off with the Passover, the 14th. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger, non Jew, He lives outside the land. He comes back. Or born in the land. He's born in the land. He's a, born in the Jewish land. This is prophecy. They're not even in their land yet. And God's already saying, I got that land for you. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations. Restaurant, houses, on the street, 
the water hole. In all your habitation shall you eat unleavened bread. Crackers, bread, cakes. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel. National. And said to them, draw out and take you a lamb. According to your families. And kill the Passover. Crucify him. Crucify him. And who did that? The leaders, the elders of Israel, the, the Sanhedrin, the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the priests, the scribes. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. It's a plant. An interesting plant to read about. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Put the blood in a basin. Bowl. And strike the lintel. As our Lord Jesus Christ was stricken by the cat nine tail, by fist. Isaiah 53. And the two side poles with the blood. You walk up to that door, you go bam, bam, bam. You don't go, ooh, 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 ooh. Strike. side post with the blood that's in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until morning after midnight that's after Gentile time see a Jewish night is 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. so don't make any plans to pass overnight stay in the house don't go out with the garbage. Don't go out on a date. Don't go out and feed the chickens. Stay behind those doors. And let me ask you a question. The day, the night that Jesus Christ died, during this time, where were the disciples, the apostles? They were in the upper room behind closed doors. Isn't that interesting? And Jesus came right through the door. Can't upset the, the feast of uh, unleavened bread. You got to wonder too with the feast. Was there blood on those doors when Jesus and disciples entered in? For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side poles, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house is to smite you. So the, the thing is, here is God walking up with the destroyer. I see blood. Let's move on. Next house. I don't see no blood. Go in. And kill. We'll get to that in a moment. Into your houses. This destroyer goes into the house. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. I've seen the Passover laid out in the Jewish homes today. And they will put a piece of a lamb, I forget what it is, on a plate where supposedly Jesus is supposed to say, that piece is broken. We'll see that in a minute. He shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass, when ye be come into the land, they haven't come out of Egypt yet, and God says, when you come into the land, 
which the Lord will give you, according as he has promised, prophecy, that he shall keep this service. Here's where you get service from. I go to morning services, and they probably don't even know that comes out of the Bible. What is the service? To keep the Passover. Make sure you don't have any unleavened bread. Make sure you don't eat unleavened bread. Make sure you keep it for seven days. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Mom, Dad, why do we go to church? Why do we do this? Kids will ask. This, I mean, excuse me, that ye shall say, this is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. This is what the Passover is all about, son. This is what happened the night we came out of Egypt, dear. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, so you get house delivery, delivery to your home, King James 1611 Bible. And the people bowed the head, corporate, as a nation, and worshipped. When Israel as a corporate were standing before Pilate and Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was taken away the sin of the world, they didn't bow their heads and say, His blood be upon us and our... What's it, what's it say verse 26? Children? They didn't say our sons and daughters. They didn't say unto our kinfolks, our grandpappies, grandkids, Mothers, fathers, boys and girls. They quoted the Bible not even knowing they quoted the Bible when they said that. About the blood of the Passover lamb. They bowed their head in worship. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Using the destroyer, verse 23. And you find this in Job 1 and 2. Satan, God, let me at him. But I'll let you, but you can't do this. God, let me at him. I'll let you, but you can't do this. God, you told me to kill those people. The first one. No, you can't. That has blood. You can't do that. Let me in that house to kill that firstborn. I see no blood. Go ahead and do it. Yes, God's in control, but the destroyer. Did the killing with God control, Job 1 and 2. So the Lord in instance smoked, but he gave the permission. Job 1 and 2. What are you going to do with that? Who destroyed Job? Satan did. Where did Satan get the permission? From God did. So in essence, God did all that to Job, but Satan was too happy to do it. God's not willing that any should perish. God's not, not thrilled that the, the wicked die in their sins. He's a righteous judge. He's a holy. But we got the destroyer. Suffered the destroyer. The firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, royalty, that sat on his throne. 
So his son's already sitting on the throne. And they're the firstborn of the captive, the slave that was in the dungeon. People that were in jail suffered. As far as the government, all the way down to the person in jail. And all the firstborn of the cattle. Animals. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. Verse 29, midnight. He and all his servants. And all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house. Where there was not one dead in Egypt. And you can't say it's a bomb. You can't say somebody went in there and did the killing. You can't say it was bad soup. Because when you check the information and the identification of these people, it was only the firstborn. Without God, how can you get that? How can evolution... Only the firstborn. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, the midnight, and said, Rise up, get your butt up, and get you forth from among my, get out of here, scram. Both be in the children of Israel and go serve the Lord as he is. Get out of here. So, people, you cannot leave Egypt, type of the world, without being under that blood of the land. You need that blood to come out of Egypt. You need to be saved by the blood of the Lord, Jesus Christ. You need the blood. You need to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you know what the next great event for Israel is coming up? We'll read about Lord willing. They're going to be baptized, according to Paul, in the Red Sea. And you know what happens after that? They take their spiritual journey on their way home. How's that? It's all laid out. The gospel. The death of a lamb, his blood will save your soul. And the world says, we don't want you no more. Get out of here. But some, they try to make friends with the world. That moment you get under the blood of the lamb, the Lord Jesus, the world says, I've had it, we get out. And then Pharaoh will go chase you. Because you now become his enemy. Read Fox's book. Uh, not Fox's book. Read uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Interesting book. Must read. Along with your Bible. And take your flocks. And your herds. As he has said. And be gone. <laughs> and bless me also. I like that little P.S. there. Make me happy. You know that's what bless me. Make me happy. You know what? You want to make me happy? Get out and don't come back. And there's no compromise. Leave. Goodbye. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. You get out of here. You're not leaving quick enough. Move it, move it, move it. That they might send them out of the land in haste. Hurry up. For they said, we be all dead men. You know what the next plague would be? The Egyptians. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. Their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. 
So the, the dough, the bread's there. They just grab it. They didn't have time to put the leaven there. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed, we talked about that the other night, of the Egyptians. Jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. What will it take for you to get out of here? That's a nice necklace you got. You take it and get out of here. Ooh, I like that, that stuff you got in your closet. Well, just take it and get out of here, will you? That's how bad it is. We'll give you whatever you want. Just get out of here. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent, borrow, lent. We've read that before. I got a stupid note here. My Bible says gave. Lent and gave are not the same words. If you ever watched a court series, there's a big difference between gift and a loan that we laugh at. Lent unto them such things as they required. What are they going to require? To build that tabernacle. See, God's foreknowledge. He's got it all laid out. And they spoiled the Egyptians. That means spoil is when the army comes in and they win. And then they go through everything. They go through the soldiers' uniform. They go through the houses, the buildings, the dead bodies. And they take what they want. And God uses a word that is, hey, victory through the battle. Spoil. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth. About 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. No counting women, no counting children, and men that were able to walk. This is not like putting the, the elderly people on animals to walk. Not counting them. This is counting the footmen, the soldiers. There was a whole mess of Israelites. And a mixed multitude. This stands for the unconverted church members. <laughs> Those are not saved. They just go along for the ride. Maybe I'll please God if I follow them. I'm not really a Christian. I'm not really a child of God. But if I just do the motions. And this mixed multitude is going to give them a hard time. The mixed multitude went also with them. And flocks and herds and very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough. Which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened. Because they were thrush, thrush, get out of here, get out, out of Egypt. And they could not tarry. The Egyptians are throwing them out. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals, food. They didn't pack no bags of food. Now the sojourning. Of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now let's go to Genesis 15 13 real quick. Genesis 15 30. 13. Genesis 15 13. And God speaking to Abraham or Abram. And he, this is, you know contradiction in the Bible Genesis 15 13 and God said he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger to the land that's not theirs here we are Egypt and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years but Exodus says 430 that's how long they were in Egypt. 430 years. First 30 years would have been Jacob and his family. Then there rose a king that did not know Joseph. Served with rigor. Start to 400 years. 
430 years in total, 400 years was the rigor. That's what that is. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years. Even the self same day, Abed 14 zero, 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 and running back 430 years to a king that knew not Joseph. Now we don't know exactly when they started doing the rigor service. And all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Fine, no one stayed it was of the children of Israel. You are a child of God by the blood of the Lamb. You are no more Egyptian. If you stay in Egypt, yeah, not where you belong. It is a night to be much reserved unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. No more rigorness. No more slavery. They are free to serve God. This is this is that night of the Lord to be served of all the children of Israel in their generations. All Jews. For us, the, the Lamb of God would take away the sin in the world. All Christians. But we're not talking about Christians. But we can talk about Christians. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Close communion. Now we're not talking about the, the Lord's table for a Christian. If you're a Christian and you're vacationing and you visit the church and you got the Lord's Supper, okay, you're saved and you're you're a born again Christian, you can take part. You Gentile, you're not gonna follow the rules, don't you dare. Don't you dare. But every man's servant that is bought for money. When thou hast circumcised them, there's that word again, then shall he eat thereof. You better be circumcised. That mark the token of Abram. For every man servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry it forth out aught of flesh abroad out of thy house. You don't take it out in a pot and bring it to another house. Neither shall neither shall ye break a bone thereof John 19.36, Psalm 34.20. How do you like how the Lord just stuck that one in there? They couldn't stone Steve. Uh, Steve, they did. They couldn't stone Jesus. That would break a bone. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord. Let all his males be circumcised. All of them. Well, my son won't do that. Then you can't do it. And let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Aren't you glad you're under grace as far as a male in the church age? There are 
people who are in the church are born again, Bible believing Christian children of God, and they're not circumcised. And according to the law, you're not saved if you want to be under the law. And you run into this in the book of Acts. And they start so you know, you must be circumcised. No, no, you don't need to be circumcised. Get you out of the law. One law, see, the law. And we're not under the law. Shall be to him that is homebound. He's of Israel. He's in the land. And unto the stranger that sojourned among you. He's not a Jew. He's a Gentile. There is one law for the Jew and Gentile under the Passover. Isn't that interesting? The New Testament without the law says there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. Romans chapter 10. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded, Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the same, the self same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of Egypt by their armies. So no blood, no coming out. And you're going to have a mixed multitude, and they haven't been redeemed. And they'll fall by the wayside. 